Rub up your engines! Well, if you saw what I was talking about Carvana the other day, now it's even worse. The stock in the last two days is down another 50% to an all time low. People are realizing it's not a feasible enterprise. Here's the funny thing Carvana blames that their loss of sales is because, well, the cars are so expensive, nobody's buying them. They're setting the prices of their cars, right? So I told people, even before they started to fall apart, I said, do not go to a Carvana and buy cars. They ask too much money for their cars. And if you accept paying that much money, guess what? People will continue to sell them at the high prices. Well, now they can't. The recession's coming. It's going to get even worse. I wouldn't be surprised if the company just goes bankrupt, or at least files of bankruptcy and all that BS that they go on. These car lots have always been greedy. Now they're even more greedy because I just read the wholesale, the price that these guys pay for cars, is dropping dramatically. For example, used SUVs compared to last year are 17% cheaper at the wholesale, where they buy them wholesale, right? Yet, at the same time, the prices at the retail at these places like Carvana, they're 7% more than they were last year. Not only are they not passing on their savings, they're charging you more. Greed, you know, it's all short-term greed. Now it's going to come to roost. People are going to realize they're charging too much for these cars. I'm not going to buy them. One has to realize there was a point of absurdity that they were selling used cars for more than a new car because the new cars weren't available, but the used cars were. So they just, ha, we got them. They don't. Here's what you're going to pay us. Greed's come to roost, and I hope they go bankrupt. And then, of course, they blame it on uh, exterior things that they can't control. Or oh, the price of cars. Yeah, but the price of cars are down, but the price of their cars are up. They're buying them cheaper at wholesale, selling them higher at retail than they ever were. And now it's come to roost. So, Carvana, that's what I say. I hope it goes to zero. It's presently six dollars something a share. It was like way up at 370 not too long ago. And even analysts now, the big analysts, now one of them said now they expect it to be between a dollar and forty dollars. Pretty big range there, one dollar to forty. Well, that's a long way from 370 something saying that well, maybe it'll be a dollar. And of course, these guys are just guessing, maybe it'll be zero. That's what I said. Ha ha on them. They rip people off, they can give them their titles. Some states have stopped allowing them to sell cars in them because they've screwed people over too much. Ha ha ha. Let greed come to roost to help it all disappear. Moad who says, Scotty. I have a front wheel drive car, but one of the front tires is worn out and cracks are formed. Should I place both or just the one? Replace them both because front wheel drive, that's what pulls your car. You want the same exact traction and handling so each tire has the same tread and the same exact tread pattern. Otherwise, it won't be that safe. It might stop odd, it might accelerate, it might slip. If you got a cracked tire. The other one's probably pretty well worn too. You know, you're going to buy tires. The front wheel drive car, you can get away with buying two. You can buy just the front or just the back. But you want to keep each axle, front axle or the back axle, to have the same exact tires on them. If you have an all wheel drive vehicle, all four have to be the same. But with front wheel drive, just the front have to be the same and the back. But buy the two front ones. Next question is Matt J. Scotty, am I changing my oil enough if I change it twice a year? I only drive about a thousand miles a year. I have a 2021 Mazda 6. You're wasting your money now. Change it once a year. Now, you should change it at least every 5,000 miles with synthetic oil, but you only drive a thousand miles a year. So, you either change it every 5,000 or once a year. Just change it once a year. You don't need to change it twice. That's overkill. You don't need to. Buy the good GF6 oil that they have. That's a generic code GF6. It'll say it has GF6 oil on it if you read the label. But you only need to change it once a year. You're throwing your money away there. Gabriel Paris says, Scotty, can rusty spark plugs indicate there's a blown head gasket? If they're rusty on the inside firing part, you pull them out of the engine. If the top, the part that sits above the engine is rusty, no, that's just old day. But if you take it off and then where the spark is and the threads, that's all rusty. It could be that coolant's getting in there and making it rust. It's all rusty. You got problems. Hi, she says, Scotty, is Denso a good brand for oxygen sensors? One and two. I'm not sure if it's OEM and I got an O4 Infinity. Denso make excellent oxygen sensors. You don't have to buy them at the dealer as long as they're Denso. They'll be the right ones. Get the ones that fit your car. People can look it up and they're excellent oxygen sensors. I'm not a fan of the Bosch ones unless the car came with a Bosch and those didn't come with Bosch. United Territory says, Scotty, what car do you drive? I drive so many cars. That's the interesting part of being a mechanic. I get getting a new car out of my system because I drive everybody else's cars to see what they're like and they're fun, but then I'm bored after a little while, right? I've got a 94 
Sal cut his bag in Tennessee. And we got an 07 Matrix driving all over the country. An 02 Lexus ES300. And they're all excellent vehicles. They all run fine. They're all Toyota and Lexus products. I bought them before this coronavirus nonsense. I mean, 02 Lexus for three grand with 65,000 miles. I don't like paying a lot of money for my cars. And I like keeping them for ever. So, if you're like that, you're really best buying Toyotas. And if you want a little more luxury, get a Lexus. Because they can last the longest. And of course, get used. You're throwing your money away buying new cars. Get a used one. But wait before you buy anything if you don't have to now. Because when the coming recession comes, the prices of everything is going to start coming down back to earth. Not this fantasy high that they're at now. Chris the crew says, Scotty, I got a 2012 Tacoma manual. Revs high after I shift and step on the gas. I'm thinking the throttle body sticking. Well, that's a simple fix. Just take the air housing off of it and get some throttle body spray cleaner. Watch my video. Make your car run better with a little spray cleaner. It'll show you exactly how you can clean that and that could fix it. Now if it doesn't fix it then you have some type of an electronic problem that it's not closing down. Realize that is an electronic throttle. You get a problem in the motor or the accelerator pedal it sends the information to the computer to open the mechanical electronic throttle that's in there. So try cleaning it. Often that will fix it. It's easy to do. MMA World says, how long can I drive with unbalanced tires? Well, how much shaking do you like? You know, you want a whole lot of shaking? Like old Jerry Lee who's conked out now? How much shaking can you handle? Dangerous if you lose control, but if you get a little vibration, I mean, I know people drive cars 10 years that way. If they didn't put much mileage and didn't wear the tires much, and they just went out of balance from old age, they kept driving them, especially if you're in town all the time, you don't get on the highway. But I mean, you get on the highway and it's shaking like mad. It's dangerous and you want to fix it. And eventually, if you do it for thousands and thousands of miles. Of course, the shaking will wear the suspension parts out faster too. So, it depends on how much shaking you can take and how much wear do you want to do on your car. For instance, if you do a lot of city driving, it's not going to be shaking that much. You don't really care. But if you got on the highway a lot, it's going to make a big difference in wear and in the safety at high speeds. Low speeds, it doesn't make all that much difference. CP says, Scotty, a new Tacoma or Nissan Frontier? Well, I like the Tacomas, but how much money do you want to spend? The Frontiers are much cheaper than the Tacomas. Now, if you're the type of guy that drives them until the wheels fall off, you might get half a million miles or more out of the Tacoma, right? You'll never get that out of the Frontier. If you're the type of guy that buys a new truck every 100,000 miles, you might be totally happy with the Frontier. It runs fine, goes perfectly good, and it's going to cost a whole lot less than the Toyota because Toyotas are known as the best, and so they charge more money for them. And these on. That company's had a history of problems throughout, ready for bankruptcy. Uh, then Carlos Gosen escaping the Japanese and going back to Lebanon, I believe, because they're going to put him in jail. Things he did when he was ahead of the Nissan. So it's kind of a messed up company. But their trucks are decent trucks. Not as good as the Toyotas, but decent trucks. Legend says, Scotty, how long can you drive with torque converter slippage only at 60 to 70 miles an hour? I've been driving at six months, no codes. Transmission otherwise works fine. All right. Well, as long as you want. What the heck? If it is the torque converter slipping, at that speed, stay away from 60 to 70, you know, drive under or over. It's not really going to hurt any, if it's the torque converter, you got to replace the torque converter, you can't fix them, so you're going to have to replace the things, but you might want to try this. Change the filter and fluid and put in some of that Lucas anti-slip transmission additive with new fluid. I've seen it make them stop slipping. It's amazing stuff. You might, you might just try that. Finally goes out, you're going to have to pull the transmission off and replace the torque converter anyways, you can't fix it, so if you don't mind, keep driving it. Anthony Torres says, Scott, here man how hard was it moving from texas to tennessee and thoughts with jeeps with that eco diesel okay well it's real easy because we moved to a new place and we left most of our stuff in texas they tore the house down they built nine hundred thousand dollar townhomes and sold them on the same lot so the builders made a whole bunch of money they paid me half a million bucks for the lot so i can't complain i got my money out of it right and we left all kinds of furniture stuff and just bought new things it was pretty easy my son did the hard work the stuff that we brought tools mainly and stuff and my motorcycle and not leave my motorcycle there right we got a big old rider truck and luckily my son when he was in the army learned how to drive all the machinery so he drove it <laughs> i was just driving the matrix <laughs> that was easy He's driving his big old truck, bouncing around. Now, as for the eco diesels, <clears throat> realize Jeep was bought by Fiat. Now it's part of Stellantis, but still, what do they put in them? They put in Italian diesel engines. They're junk. They're now on their third generation of Italian diesel engines. The first two are crap. They all blew up. I would not buy anything Italian, especially a diesel engine. The tolerances have to be perfect. They have tons more internal pressure than a gasoline engine. I would not buy an Italian diesel engine. After Benny the Rolling Other says, Scotty, my wife is mean. Should I get a new one? <laughs> Maybe she's mean because you made her mean, you know? <laughs> Maybe you didn't treat her right. There's always two sides to the story, right? I mean, if she really is mean, you should have figured that out before you married her. I married a really nice one, so... <laughs>
if she really is mean, I mean, and you're a nice guy, maybe you're both mean, and maybe you deserve each other, I don't know. People are a lot more complex than machines. You're young, maybe it is time to go away, rather than uh, deal with a bunch of nonsense, especially if you don't have any kids yet. Believe me, don't have kids and then divorce, that's a real strain. If you don't have any kids now, and you're in a bad relationship, probably a good idea to get out of it, you know? But, there's two sides to every story, so, you know, I'd have to talk to your wife on that one. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.